This is my introduction video to the Flat Earth debate. I decided to get into this debate because, for one, I have two close friends who I regard as intelligent people who through YouTube have been convinced that the Earth is actually a flat plane. And because of my regards for these brothers, I decided to do my own research because if it wasn't for that, I wouldn't have bothered to waste my time. But as I looked into it, at first, many of the arguments sounded convincing until I further investigate what was being said. And what I have found out is that all of the flat earth arguments are based on trust your senses or what things seem like without further investigation, without further observation or looking past what things may seem like. You know, if I get in my car, for example, and I drive 200 miles one night, and during the course of that 200 mile drive, the moon seems like it's following me. And at the end of that 200 miles, I look and the moon is in the same place, or it seems like it anyway. Do I conclude then that the moon has actually followed me? Or do I further investigate what's happening or why the moon seems like it has followed me for 200 miles? Because if I accept or conclude that the moon has actually followed me 200 miles, then that is not scientific. Because scientific observation or hypothesis requires observation and it requires investigation and it requires demonstration to prove an occurrence. Or accept an occurrence as fact. When you just trust your senses, you can be easily fooled. You know, I'm here in the D.C. area and I went to the Warner Theater to see David Copperfield some years ago. And when I went to the Warner Theater, I mean, David Copperfield was flying. I mean, this man is flying. And I'm like, I mean, he seemed like he was flying. But, you know, an another trick he did, he, it was this lady sitting in front of me. And when he came into the audience, he went to this lady and he had in his hand what looked like toilet paper. And in, you know, that, that toilet paper, what he did, he began to make tears on it and work with it until it looked like a paper rose flower. And then he laid it on one hand and took his other hand and brought it over top of that paper rose and began to move his hand in a circular motion. And as he moved his hand in a circular motion, the paper rose lifted up off of his bottom hand and began to twirl with the motion of his upper hand. And as it reached an incredibly fast spin, he did like an abracadabra motion. And the paper rolls went up in flames. And as the flame and smoke was there, he reached for that flame. And when he reached for it, it turned into an actual rose. And he gave the rose to the lady. How romantic. But my point is, do I conclude that that's actually what happened because it seemed like he turned a paper rose into an actual real rose? That would be absurd for me to conclude that without further investigation. And so this is what I see from flat earth proponents. They make absurd claims like clouds being behind the sun without investigating why it's happened 
And even when that's investigated, if you do investigate and see why it's happening, the, the conclusion is not accepted. And, and this seems to be because when we were taught heliocentrism, most of us accepted it based on assumption. We didn't research heliocentrism. We accepted it because we were young and that's what was taught to us. And it seemed like common knowledge. And so we accepted it based on assumption, not making the conscious the decision to believe it but we accepted it because that's what was taught to us but the difference with flat earth believers is that they have consciously chose to believe in a flat plane and in believing that the earth is a flat plane they have made a conscious decision to do so and therefore they have a psychological attachment to this belief as well as an emotional attachment to this belief and what that does emotion clouds judgment and distorts perception and so somebody can tell you that the moonlight is making an object colder than it would be in the moon shade and someone shows you that they're putting or aiming a thermometer on both objects, one in the shade and one in the open air. And the conclusion is that the moonlight is actually making the object colder without further investigation of why it's happening. And so because you believe in the flat earth and this is something to help explain uh, moonlight, then being different than actually reflecting sunlight is something different it's self illuminate that you think that this helps explain that so because you believe it as well believe in flat earth as well you accept this conclusion that moonlight is making something colder you accept this on face value without further investigation without understanding why something in the shade is warmer so that's not scientific and we don't want to go down that road and second and that's that leads to the second reason of why i wanted to get into this debate because it's dumbing down the people it's it's dumbing down your mind where you don't have the will to contribute to the onward march of civilization because you are not thinking past what things seem like and that's a problem and that's what i came to deal with i want to deal with curvature that's one of the main arguments that flat earthers make so i definitely want to deal with curvature and i want to deal with spin or rotation motion revolutions around the sun i want to deal with this motion because that those two arguments are the main arguments that a lot of flat earthers like to make because they think if we deal with those two things if we can focus on those two things then the other arguments that we make have some credence because if they can't prove curvature or they can't prove spin or that the earth is moving, then we got them. And then we can start bringing to you some other absurd arguments to help support no curvature, no spin. So I want to get into that. I want to deal with gravity. I want to deal with Antarctica. I want to deal with water finding it's level. I want to deal with all of the arguments that flat earthers teach on YouTube. And hopefully after I finish this series of videos, and I do have a few challenges to a few people because I've been disrespected and I haven't even made a video, but I've been disrespected. So we're going to, we're going to deal with them as well. So without I don't want to hold you hostage any more than I am, so I'll see you next video. Signing off.